just yep. one. Right. People can hear me. Yep. All right. Welcome back, everyone. I hope that I am audible on Zoom. If I'm not, too bad for you. Should have been here. Um, so I'm delighted to introduce our first speaker of the afternoon, Yuri Sulima, uh, who would like you to give him a job who, <laughs> and who will tell us about uh, prisons from the equivariant perspective. Thanks, Yuri. All right. Well, first, uh, thanks very much to the organizers for the invitation to speak. This has been run super well, really cool format and been a very inspiring conference so far. So uh, yeah, thanks. So I'll be telling you about prisms, uh, which we've already heard about this week from the perspective of equivariant homotopy theory. So let me start out with some history. So we've heard Bot Schulze introduced prisms in 2019. Uh, this has a predecessor in the work uh, they did with Matthew Morrow, where they built prismatic cohomology initially using uh, topological Hochschild homology. And ultimately this goes back to uh, calculation of Hesselholt in 2005. Now, for most of history, THH was studied via genuine equivariant homotopy theory. Along the way, Nikolaus and Schultze uh, showed that in the case of THH, that information is highly redundant, and you can take it out. Uh, and in my research, I've kind of been interested in bringing equivariant homotopy theory back into the picture. Uh, in particular today, I would like to present evidence for a conjecture which is that the notion of prism can be generalized uh, to any, uh, associated to any monoid acting on a compact Lie group, that there should exist a notion of prism, which when we take the natural numbers under multiplication acting on the circle group, or really the p-typical part of that story, this should recover Bot Schultz's notion of prism. So this isn't a theorem yet, but it's already led to interesting ideas in both equivariant homotopy and in prismatic cohomology. Okay, so let me start with some background. So Carissa already introduced Mackey functors, so this will be pretty quick. So if a, I have a compact Lie group, a Mackey functor is going to consist of an abelian group for each finite subgroup of a G. Then uh, anytime K is contained in H, or more generally subconjugate to H, I'll have restriction and transfer maps uh, between them. Uh, I have actions, residual actions of the vial groups on each of these things. And an ax one of the axioms is if I transfer up and then I restrict back down, that needs to be the same as just summing over all the conjugates in here. Uh, so I'll use the notation T H over K for this. And in my case, all of these they actions are going to be trivial, but uh, this axiom is still gonna be interesting. Okay, so we want to work not just with abelian groups, which is, these are the analogs of, but uh, I, a green functor is a Mackey functor where uh, all of the things are rings, all of the restriction maps between them are ring homomorphisms, and uh, this Frobenius reciprocity, which is saying that the transfer is linear if you twist the multiplication by one of these restriction maps. But in equivariant homotopy theory, this is not actually the uh, correct definition or analog of a commutative ring, we want something more. So a Tambara functor is a green functor, which also has norm maps. So these are multiplicative analogs of the transfers. So norms are multiplicative. Uh, if I norm up and then restrict back down, that is the same now as multiplying all the conjugates together. Uh, and although the norm is not additive, it is additive modulo the image of transfers. Okay, so some examples. So for me, the most important uh, Tambara functor is the Mackey, Tambara functor of width vectors. So Dress and Ziebenich are defined uh, generalized Tambara or width vectors for any profinite group. I want to work instead of with quotients of a profinite group, I wanna look at subgroups of a compact Lie group uh, and so just to be safe, I'm going to assume uh, that G is abelian here, although that shouldn't be essential. Uh, so the G width vectors of R is going to consist of, uh, as a set, it's just uh, elements indexed by the subgroups of G. Then the addition is defined in a funny way. So I have a ghost map, which goes from WG of R to 
r to the og, which is going to send uh, these these coordinates a to what we. Oh, sorry. OG is the uh, set of subgroups of G up to conjugacy, which in this case, since I'm assuming abelian, it's the set of all subgroups or like the orbit category. Yeah, sorry. Um, to these ghost coordinates. So this needs to be a ring homomorphism where this thing is just addition multiplication component wise, which means there's a really weird law for adding things and multiplying things in terms of these coordinates, but these ones are easy to understand. So a particular case of this is if I take the g wit vectors of the integers, this is exactly uh, the homotope or pi zero, Mackie pi zero of the g equivariant sphere, uh, which is also the same as the Burnside ring of finite g sets. And so as g varies, these fit into a, a Tambara functor. And closely related to that, Morton Brun shows that uh, the wit vectors are the free Tambara functor on a ring with G action. Uh, and I can also apply this to just rings where the action is trivial. So uh, I'll mainly be working with P typical width vectors. So this is when the group is the P stuff, P power stuff inside the circle. So the width vector, P typical width vector, uh, Mackie functor of a ring K is going to be width vectors of length. Uh, I'm normalizing these so this is n plus one. So W zero of K is K. Uh, so in this case, the ghost polynomials are these, W zero is the same as A zero, but then you get these more complicated things for the ghost coordinates, higher ghost coordinates. Uh, and so the Mackie functor structure here, if I use ghost coordinates, is the F, which is the restriction, uh, will throw away the first coordinate. Verschiebung, which is the transfer, will insert a zero and then multiply everything after that by p. And then the norm, so the norm is something that's not so familiar classically. Uh, so, but the norm is given by um, putting, duplicating the first entry and then raising everything else to the power of p. So the norm, uh, the Tambara structure here was identified by Engelpoit and Borger uh, and inspired by equivariant homotopy theory, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I want to work with subgroups of a compact Lie group as opposed to, pro, so I'm modifying their construction and there's a, I sort of only know, I'm only confident about how to do that when G is abelian. So yeah, I'm, index, I'm not using their construction exactly. Yes, yeah. Sorry? Oh yeah, the question was about, uh, I'm using CP to the infinity, uh, whereas Dress Ziemannicker were interested in a quotient of a profinite group so they would be using zp like the piatic integers whereas i'm using cp to the infinity which is qp mod zp any other questions okay uh so uh one other example of, of a tambara functor is the complex representation ring of a group so this is isomorphism classes of finite dimensional representations complex representations so I'm going to describe this for finite cyclic groups. If I let uh, lambda be the default representation of like, the circle on C, C and I uh, define this lambda analog of N to be this sum, then uh, the Mackie functor structure looks like this. So RU of CN is Z lambda mod lambda N minus one. And then uh, the transfer is a twisted version of this lambda analog. All right, so uh, prisms. Uh, I'm fortunate Ben also and Akil also introduced prisms, so this will also be quick. So prism consists of a delta ring and an ideal. Uh, the ideal is locally principal and generated by a non-zero divisor. A is PI complete, or maybe even just derived PI complete. And there's this funny prism condition, one form of which is phi of I is generated uh, by a thing which is congruent to P modulo I. So some examples of prisms. Uh, if I take ZP double brackets Q minus one, I take my ideal to be generated by this Q analog of P. We call this the Q de Rom prism. Uh, there's also a perfect version of that. So where we adjoin all P power roots of unity 
to Q. And then uh, for reasons, we replace Q with, we instead take the Q to the one over P analog of P, essentially because we want Q to be one. So we want Q to the one over P, or Q is a deformation of one. So it's really Q to the one over P that should be a, a primitive P of root of unity. Uh, we also have the break is in prism associated to the setup Ben told us about. So I won't really talk about specific prisms that much, but this is another important example. Uh, some definitions. So prisms orientable if the ideal is principal, perfect if phi is an isomorphism, crystalline if the ideal is generated by P, and transversal if the quotient ring is P torsion free. So in particular, I'm going to want to find analogs of all these definitions in the world of Tambara functions. Transversal prisms are the most important class or definition that I care about from that. So uh, every prism can be resolved by transversal ones, meaning you can prove things just for transversal prisms and then wave uh, the con extension wand and just have things be valid for every prism. So if I let I n be this ideal, where I take the ideal I and then multiply by phi of I and dot, 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 phi to the n I, we have this amazing thing that for transversal prisms, uh, this quotient ring embeds into the product of all of these A mod phi to the n I's, uh, which is not true for like, like Z mod P squared doesn't embed into Z mod P cross Z mod P. So I'll call these uh, transversal coordinates uh, where I write, Ti for the residue of an element in A mod phi to the i. Uh, and to understand how this relates to width vectors, there's a comparison map that goes from uh, width vectors length m plus one of A mod i to A mod i m. If I use ghost coordinates on the source and uh, transversal coordinates on the target, then this is given by this weird reversal and reversal and Fabiniation. So this map was originally constructed by Molokov. Uh, one of the applications of my work is a more conceptual construction of this, but I think you need to see the formula first in order to like understand any of the constructions that follow. All right, so what I want to tell you about today is that prisms give Tambara functors. So in particular, they give Mackie functors. So uh, what I'm going to send uh, like a coset of CP infinity two is on the underlying, I'm going to take A mod I, it's A mod I zero, and the CP fixed points are A mod I one, CP squared fixed points are A mod I two, and so on. Then for the transfers, well, you can work out from the prism condition, a more general version that uh, for every N, this phi to the N I is generated by a thing which is congruent to P modulo this I N. And so my transfers I define to be multiplying by those elements. So remember, a Mackie functor, if I transfer up and restrict back down, that has to be the same as multiplication by, in this case, just, in this case, just by P. So this prism condition, that this is congruent to P mod I N, is exactly what we need to form a Mackie functor out of this. But even more is true, they said uh, there's a Tambara functor, so uh, let's try to explain what the norm map should look like in terms of the uh, prism itself. So uh, the norm we know, if I norm up and come back down, that's supposed to be the same as raising to the power of P, so I need this. Uh, and it's also supposed to be a ring homomorphism modulo the image of the transfers. So if we stare at this for a few seconds, we can write down a formula that works in general. And this again is adapted by, from Engelbright and Borger's work. So uh, I just define it as phi X minus this pi N delta of X. So modulo I N, uh, this thing is congruent to P. So I had, this was X to the P plus P delta X, and I'm removing that, so I get this. Uh, then mod the image of the transfer, this thing is just phi of X, and phi is a ring homomorphism. So this works. Uh, there's a variant you can do when you're over the q Duron prism. So again, this is our characterization of the norm. So if I have two elements which delta of x and delta of y are both zero, then I define the q-twisted power as this funny uh, product over x minus q to the i y. Now, despite the notation, this depends on x and y, not just 
x minus y. However, we can verify, OK, this thing, sorry, this should be a, a the sub q should be up here. Uh, well, modulo this thing, q becomes congruent to 1. So this is just x minus y to the p. And mod pq, this q becomes a primitive p throughout power root of unity. So this just becomes qp minus yp, which since these were had delta 0, that's the same as just phi of this thing. So this twisted q, this twisted power is another lift of the norm. Uh, this, you can also give uh, formulas for this into transversal coordinates. So uh, f will drop the last transversal coordinate. v will multiply everything by p and insert a 0 at the end. And the norm will raise everything to the power p and insert a phi at the end. And again, in order to be a valid Mackey or, or, or Tambara functor, uh, the blue is the only place where we have any option. Uh, axioms force all but the last coordinate. Uh, and this also, like my construction of the Tambara functor involved a choice of these pi n's. So you can use this to uh, do this for transversal prisms without making any choices and then extend from there. OK, so what is this? This norm, as I said, is maybe uh, the first piece of, uh, of data that's not as familiar classically. So if I take the norm and I divide it by this Verschiebung, I get this expression phi of x over phi of psi times delta of psi minus delta of x. Now, this might, may or may not be familiar, depending on who you are. This is exactly what Bach Schulze defined as a q divided power. Uh, actually, they don't have this delta of psi term, but in their situation, uh, delta of psi is congruent to 1 mod psi. They're only working over the q to ron prism, so you can argue that this is actually the correct formula in general. Now, one objection is uh, the formula I wrote down for the norm, as well as this Q twisted power, exist at the level of prism, not in this Mackey functor, whereas the norm only exists in this Mackey functor system. So it might seem like the norm is losing a lot of arithmetic information. But actually, if you start out with those expressions, the fact that those descend to this Mackey functor is equivalent to what you might call the fundamental lemma of Q crystalline cohomology. The dilemma on the existence of uh, higher divided powers. Uh, slight, something slightly more is true. So uh, in equivariant homotopy, we have the slice filtration, which Carissa told you about. So I calculated this on THH of perfectoids, and very roughly the answer is that you get a filtration by Q factorials. Now the slice filtration is designed to interact well with the norm. The norm scales slice filtration. And so under this identification, this fact about the norm scaling slice filtration roughly corresponds to a lemma that goes into the convergence of the Q logarithm or prismatic logarithm. So this is all very suggestive. So you can imagine a theory of G, G crystalline cohomology, where in addition to having divided powers, you would ask for divided norms. And maybe the slice filtration would tell you uh, what those norms should be divided by in terms of getting some analog of NQ factorial from the slice filtration. Uh, in this direction, Mike Hill has written down or has uh, yeah, developed the cotangent complex for Tambara functors. And a lot of that looks similar to stuff that happens in Q crystalline world, but not exactly. OK, that is kind of speculative. Let me get to a more concrete application. So uh, for any prism, there exists a natural map from Wn uh, m of a mod i n to a mod i m plus n. So this was previously constructed uh, by Molokov in the case n equals zero. And this is almost immediate from Bruin's theorem that width vectors are uh, the free Tambara functor. Basically, in width coordinates, something a0, a1, a2, that's just norm squared a0 plus, like you can express this just in terms of norms and Verschiebungs of those coordinates. So as soon as I know how to norm and Verschiebung stuff uh, in A, then I get this map. For n equals 0, uh, this map globalizes. And you get a map from the Durham-Witt complex of R over A mod I to the uh, cohomology, or this sort of mod I m prismatic cohomology of R. Uh, this is an isomorphism in many cases. 
it's not quite clear here uh, what to do, how to generalize it to higher n. Okay, so now uh, the exciting part is, can we go backwards? Can we build a prism out of a Tambara functor? So let A be a CP infinity Tambara functor. Obviously, I'm going to define A to be the limit of these A CP to the Ns, and I to be the kernel of uh, the map to the underlying. Uh, and a non-degeneracy condition, I'll assume that the underlying is non-zero or that the whole thing is zero. Sorry, put that up for a second. So uh, the second condition I'll impose is that uh, this should be derived T complete, meaning all of these are derived complete with respect to these sum over conjugacy, sum over conjugate maps. In our case, this is just the same as asking that all the fixed points be derived P complete. But the way P appears in the proofs, it's more natural to say it with T. Okay, so the main definition that you should take away from this talk is now diffractivity. So I say a green functor is diffractive if any time K is subconjugate to H, the annihilator of the kernel of restriction is equal to the image of transfer. This might be hard to unpack, I'll explain it in a second. But you always have an inclusion in one direction by Frobenius reciprocity. Uh, I'll also ask if that kernel is locally principal. It's strongly diffractive if, in addition, the restrictions are surjective and the transfers are injective. And so the lemma is that if you have something that's strongly diffractive and derived T complete, then uh, we get this Cartier divisor condition on spec A. So the intuition behind this definition is like here we were, like we're modding out by i phi i phi squared i. I is the kernel of restricting down to here, and phi i phi squared i is like the image of the transfer. So this gets, sort of gets broken up into information like this and reassembled in different ways. So some examples. So the Mackey Tambara functor we associated to a prism is strongly diffractive. Generalized width vectors of any integral domain are diffractive. P typical width vectors of FP algebras with injective Frobenius are diffractive. Uh, but not for semi-perfect FP algebras. Uh, if restriction maps are injective, then you're diffractive if and only if the transfers are surjective. So this also rules out a lot of examples. So like underline Z is not. And what I think is the most convincing example, so if I have a CN ring spectrum, which is even periodic, then the cell structure of these representation spheres give me a long exact sequence like this. So this is exactly saying that the kernel of restriction is this image of this uh, uh, equivariant Euler class. And the kernel of that, which is the annihilator of the kernel of restriction, is the image of transfer. So if this funny ROG graded group is isomorphic to the uh, corresponding Z graded group, uh, then pi zero E is diffractive. And this happens a lot in practice. It's closely related to the Siegel conjecture. Okay, so this is a cool condition. Then uh, I say a Mackey functor is transversal if this thing is always a pullback. So this is essentially the isotropy separation square, and I'm claiming that that holds on pi zero instead of at the level of spectra. So these will correspond to transversal prisms. Uh, and a functor, Tambara functor is cohomological if all of these transfer restriction or norm restriction uh, are just multiplying or raising to an integer power. So this is the same as being a Z underlying Z algebra. This definition already existed. This one did not, as far as I know. And so cohomological things should correspond to uh, crystalline prisms. Okay, so the last ingredient is the delta operations. So uh, a, the delta structure on A is encoded by a map from A to W of A which in ghost coordinates is, looks like this, and in bit coordinates uh, uses these Joyal's delta two, delta n operations. So then I can project from here down to here. And from this description of the map, it's clear that I get a factorization like this. It's very hard to prove that from this description of the map. And when I compose with the other map that I produced, uh, we get a factorization of Wm phi of m through this thing. And this map also was not known previously. So I can recover delta from this. Uh, you also can use this to show that A is derived I complete. 
And the exciting thing is, I believe we can axiomatize these maps for M. I've, this is my last slide. So if M is acting on G, and I have an element of M and the subgroup H of G, this is the stuff I'm trying to recover abstractly. So axioms of Tambara functors always give me uh, some sort of Frobenius, which is just the norm mod transfers. So here I'm modding out by all proper subgroups of, uh, of this target. So I can ask for a lift of that map. So this is just a lift of Frobenius. And I can also ask a more refined question, uh, which is for asking for delta operations. And so uh, I believe you can phrase all of this in a way that will work for in that general setup I discussed mentioned. All right, thank you. Questions from the local audience. Um, yeah, I have a question. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you imagine being the role of these sort of uh, generalized prisms for I guess you said it was always like a Lie group with an action. Yeah, I mean, I, again, I'm still a little bit, I, I don't, I haven't exactly figured out the exact generality. Um, I'm feeling pretty good, but yeah, the ink isn't dry. Um, the main application that I would want is uh, there's a theory of like real THH and real K theory. Uh, so I would hope for a theory of real prismatic cohomology that makes it easy to calculate real K theory the same way prismatic cohomology has made it way, way easier to calculate ordinary K theory. Uh, so that would be supposed to do like O of two? Yeah. Instead of S of okay. Yes, exactly. Um, and then there's still within this context, uh, Bot Schulze, when they prove that something, they prove that pi zero TP of quasi-regular semi-perfectoid rings is a prism they make a comment that their proof is really indirect and they don't have a good conceptual reason for it. Uh, so I'm hoping that you could prove that using these methods. And that in particular is guiding, like I want a, I want a theorem that's explicit enough that I can actually produce this structure. Something. Cool. Other local questions? So this may be like an overly simple question, but um, so what you're, you're, you're saying that if you, if you have a general prism that gives you a Mackie, a, a, a Tambara functor, in fact, for CPD infinity, mm -hmm. right? Yes. And are there, but then you have some other auxiliary lead, right? I have a monoid M acting on G or where G is some of some auxiliary Lie group that you've chosen. Sorry. So what I'm trying, my what I'm hoping to show is that uh, I'm basically I'm trying to define a notion of G M prism such that when G is C P infinity and M is N, this is prisms in the existing sense. Okay, great. And also uh, there was a, a slide a long time ago where you wrote there was N and there was N cross. N cross means the natural numbers as a monoid under multiplication. N means the natural numbers including zero under addition. Oh, so wait, n cross does not include zero. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, or wait, could so, sorry, which, which went with which? N is just under addition, n cross is under multiplication. Sorry, but which went with which group in that example? Uh, so n cross acts on the circle group, n, which is like p to the power of n, acts on CP infinity. Great. Yeah. Any more local questions? Questions from the Zoom audience. All right, let's thank Yuri again. <laughs>